Okay, we're gonna try again. I think I invited her this time. I'm on my phone instead of my computer. I'm a little bit better at phones. Okay, I invited her and I'm gonna start talking. It was so exciting to see so many people in the last live. Let me know what questions you have. Tom, I saw last second that you commented um, meditation. Yes, a thousand percent. At the end of every yoga session, I will start meditating, um, manifesting. I mean, just really putting your goals into your life. If you have insomnia, you know, every single night, you're going to look at yourself and you're going to say, I'll see you at 8 a.m. I'm not going to be awake. I'm not going to come to the bathroom in the middle of the night. I'm not going to get up. See you at 8 a.m. Just talk to yourself. Um, it's amazing what your body can hear. I mean, even if you tell people, yeah, I'm fine, I'm great, but then deep down, you know, I'm really sad, I'm really tired, that starts weighing on you. So I definitely always think positive. I'm a really just positive person in general, and I think that's, that's I, I'm happy, so I, I think it works out. Um, I, I just recommend to people be a good person. Karma is real, and all of that goes into self-care. Um, putting it out into the universe, just not just to get it back. Um, but yeah, definitely taking care of yourself in the process. Bring on camera. Okay. Hi. Welcome. Hi, Aspen. How are you? I am doing well. How are you? I don't actually think we've ever met before. So really nice to meet you. Yes, you too. Let me kind of adjust some settings here and make sure I got good volume and this ain't going to fall. And... Oh, oh, all that just made me a little uh, anxious. <laughs> I know. What was going on? I'm not going to computer. So I'm like, oh, I'm just going to do this on my phone. So I think this will work a little bit better. Um, while people are rolling in here, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you're in the cannabis industry. Um, can you hear me okay? Does my volume sound like it's coming through? It is perfect. Great. So, um, I am a registered nurse, a veteran. Uh, I became disabled from a, a disability. And within um, about six and a half years, I was pretty much in the bed, taking injections, taking pharmaceuticals. Um, I diagnosed with MS while I was working as a registered nurse in the CPICU. And I was having trouble remembering things. I was getting lost. I was dropping things. I had already had several diagnoses with chronic uh, major depressive disorder, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, bulging discs, and a few other um, what seemed like unrelated things, dropping things, carpal tunnel, um, weird sensations, thyroid issues. Um, once I got diagnosed with the MS, it kind of all made sense, but it really doesn't matter. You can have a diagnosis of any of these diseases that we like to just kind of throw out there. At the bottom of it, I think um, a lot of it's an endocannabinoid deficiency. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's a really interesting point of view. Um, I've never actually heard someone word it that way. So you just had a whole lot going on, and a lot of that just went back to your endocannabinoid system. Will you explain just what that is and kind of how all these different symptoms relate back to it? Sure. So the endocannabinoid system is there to create balance, homeostasis. If something gets off kilter here, there's always a balancing act going on. A lot of times when we take pharmaceuticals, we just try and slam this down because we don't like where it's at, but we always have it. Oh, hi, kitty, kitty. <laughs> <laughs> I know. If I put him outside, he meows really loud. So. <laughs> Sorry about we don't that. want that. <laughs> Do your thing. You get sad. So, a lot of times when we, um, you know, when we take pharmaceuticals and things get out of balance, then we need another pharmaceutical to put that thing in balance, and then we have a side effect here, and it's just it's it's a rat race. Um, I was pretty feeling pretty hopeless and pretty helpless. Uh, chronic pain forever, and then the chronic depression that went on with it. Um, somehow, I stumbled across something on Facebook that asked about being a veteran. If you're on opiates or have chronic pain or chronic depression, PTSD, 
you know, 22 veterans a day are committing suicide, completing suicide, not just attempting. And, and really those numbers are probably skewed because a lot don't get reported. Um, Thomas Mundale, he and uh, 20 other soldiers went with myself. And so we took 22 of us out to Colorado to look at uh, cannabis as medicine and as an alternative to opiates, to depression, to suicide. Um, and of course, they had a few other things. They had a little bit on mushrooms, a little bit on other psychedelics and stuff that we do see now that even uh, DARPA is putting 27 million into psilocybin and uh, ketamine as options for, for uh, the military. Yeah, Unfortunately, exactly. they haven't passed the CBD for the military. Only the veterans can get the CBD, but hopefully all of it's going to kind of come to light as, as the education keeps getting spread. Yes, I've seen some amazing work with MAPS, too. I saw them at the Drug Policy Alliance Conference, and I was absolutely blown away. Someone, um, I mean, they described how they're not necessarily tripping, but they just take mushrooms all day, every day, and it's just kind of like they're cannabis. You know, it keeps them happy and lightheaded and you know, it doesn't bring on those heavy, deep emotions. Right, right. And, and you know, um, I just kind of stumbled upon, well, not really stumbled. It kept getting thrown in my face in multiple ways. I feel like the universe kept bringing it to me. The last thing was when I was down um, at a friend's little uh, mountain playing in the woods with her. She and I was going through logs and all this stuff, waiting for her uh, spouse to get back so we could go do other things. And... Lo and behold, there's this big white mushroom on the side of the tree, and it was lion's mane. I knew what it was immediately because it had kept coming across my path ever since I learned about cannabis. And lion's mane's not psychoactive, but it has something pretty cool that I think is going to be a benefit to every human, no different than cannabis being a benefit. Because of the endocannabinoid system and creating balance, a lot of our, our, our system is regulated by our nerves. If you have neuropathy, it can be from alcohol, it can be from diabetes, it can be from vitamin B deficiencies, it can be from multiple sclerosis or something else attacking the, the nervous system. When we don't have our cannabinoids there to kind of help buffer and protect, um, you know, we, we, we have disability. One of those things is things like Alzheimer's, uh, a lot of the neurological things, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, MS, um, has to do with the brain and the nerves. Same with seizures. They see that um, our bodies make something called nerve growth factor, but so does the mushroom lion's mane. So to wrap this all with psilocybin is Paul Stamets is the myco king. Everybody that starts getting into um, mushroom therapies is going to find out about Paul Stamets. And he has a great video called Fantastic Fungi where I learned about mushrooms being able to clean up oil spills, where I learned about them being able to heal the body. Um, lion's mane happened to be one of them. And he suggests stacking lion's mane with nice and the old fashioned kind that you used to try and clean up your pee for a test. If you were a user, I wasn't really a user, so I never worried about that. I was using niacin for detoxing, but it caused that prickly heat flushing. That's the kind you want with lion's mane and with micro doses of psilocybin when that becomes available and legal. Um, he believes that that's the best way to repair the myelin sheath so we're getting protection, repair, and then progression because he talks about even collective consciousness. When we raise, you know, the rewiring of our brain, which is what cannabinoids do and what some of these other things in things like lion's mane or our mushrooms, our plant therapies, the stuff that was on earth to heal us, we gain benefits. Um, one of the things is the amyloid plaque with Alzheimer's has been being studied with lion's mane alone, but you add these other things and we're seeing repairs where they're allowed to do it. Um, they got it for depression now in uh, Canada. Psilocybin's for depression. They're using it here with St. John at St. Johns Hopkins uh, or John Hopkins for uh, you know terminal cancer patients that are in this study. It's not just helping them, but it helps their family to see their people at peace, to see these new connections. And you know, today the guy from Maps was um, sophisticated Hoosiers had him on there talking about a lot of these psychedelics that are going on. And cannabis is not a psychedelic, but there's so many overlaying properties that it's just kind of, I think this is another nutrient we're supposed to have. Wow, that is amazing. So, so is it similar to nice in the way uh, lion's mane makes you feel? Is there any immediate, um, you know, kind of like how you consume cannabis, you feel euphoric if you have nice in. I personally feel like I have an all over sunburn. 
um, is there any kind of immediate side effect? So that's what you're going to feel when you, if you do stack with the niacin. But if you use the mushroom uh, lion's mane alone, you don't feel that. I can't okay. tell you what you would or wouldn't feel if you had psilocybin with it. But I can tell you with lion's mane alone, you can't feel it. But I have a lot of people that take it with our CBD or uh, CBG tinctures. Mm -hmm. And they, they're telling me like they're feeling it in like days. I had one person that I sent it to, and I swear that I just got it to her on Monday, and she said her and her, her wife is already tell, able to tell the effects. They've used lion's mane before, um, but I thought it was going to take at least three weeks to kind of start building up in the system to get that nerve growth factor that's in the, the mushroom that our body also makes to kind of see something. But I don't know. I think cannabis helps things just do better faster anyway because our body is more optimal, you know. Yes, I completely agree. Well, that is a very amazing story that got you into this. And you've obviously dove way deeper than a lot of people um, in this industry beyond, you know, just cannabis and looking into other holistic therapies. Um, what else have you learned? Tell me more. This is this is awesome. I, I um, love that. So for me, um, what else have I learned? CBG is becoming kind of a fun molecule in the cannabis plant. You know, it's not psychoactive. Well, okay, it is psychoactive. I love that it's psychoactive. It's not inebriating. It's not gonna cause you to feel high. It's actually kind of the opposite where I have a lot of people that use cannabis as medicine. They might, you know, accidentally go over the dose. So I'm not saying they're overdose and dying. They go yes. over the dose, so they technically are overdosing and getting undesirable effects that are over what is, you know, beneficial for them. And they feel like they need to come down a little bit or they're a little too spacey. CBG loves the CB1 receptor, just like THC. So, it's just going to fill it up. It's going to steal its receptor. <laughs> just a little bit there. And it kind of brings THC down to a more manageable level and it doesn't destroy it. You know, it just you know, kind of competes for that receptor and you kind of can get focused, but still have your body relief that a lot of people are using cannabis for these days. Yeah, that is, that is awesome. I'm going to see if anyone actually has any questions about that. Yeah. And CBG is something I just took uh, because I've tried using just cannabis when I'm nervous and I kind of maybe get a little more nervous. So um, yeah, so this has been like kind of a lifesaver for me. I'm kind of enjoying it and it's kind of fun. And the way that they're finding that CBG is working, it's been um, reported. And I have customers that come back to me telling me that if they would have started with uh, CBG or CBG flower, they may have never even explored cannabis because they feel like they're getting better uh, benefits that are more calming, especially to be able to use day in and day out than um, fully loaded, you know, THC products. Yes, yes. And I, I personally do believe with CBD, it does take a little bit longer to build up in the system. Um, will you talk about why with CBD, it takes a little bit longer to notice those effects long term, whereas with um, a higher THC content cannabis plant, um, it's immediate. Right. So, so THC is working on the and binds directly to CB1 and CB2 receptors you're going to have that immediate response with it because it's kind of on those receptors that create an immediate response versus CBD will go into the cell and it kind of um, attaches differently on the receptors. And CBD is a very uh, powerful molecule, but it's not real potent. So it takes a little bit more and it can take more um, length of time to see certain things because it's not going to cause that that thing here where you see it, you feel it, and you some like it and some don't, and hopefully you can get to where you love all of it. Um, but CBD is going to take a little bit longer to do things like turn down inflammation and, and those things that we're hoping to see. Now, some people, especially when your receptors are kind of primed, it seems like you can get immediate effects with CBD, especially if you have great terpenes with it. So I really don't even say I sell CBD. I just say I have, you know, Alice CBD drops with BCP or beta caryophylline, that's one of my favorite terps. And I kind of um, have some friends down in Tulsa that one of them patented it. You know, the BCP molecule, not they're not making any money off of it, but they are, they're seeing the novel and great ways that it is beneficial, you know? And yes, so, I completely yeah. agree. Caryophylline is my top three favorite uh, terpene. Um, I mean, it's great for inflammation. I get a lot of inflammation in my chest. And it is, it, it's amazing. I also sit all day. So 
you know, throwing on my back with like a one-to-one ratio. Um, um, cannabis oil or cream, that is amazing. Will you talk a little bit about one-to-one ratios? I know you were talking about the balancing act and how the endocannabinoid system does that. And with THC and CBD working together simultaneously, um, I feel like it's kind of the perfect balance. Yeah, so um, it, 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 it kind of keeps THC from acting so naughty. And it does a lot of things that CB, uh, THC doesn't. So THC, again, you know, it's going to have the direct effects of using the CB1, CB2 receptors and stuff. But it sounds like CBD can actually go into almost any cell and even down into the cell, not just on the cell surface. And, you know, some of the things that they're talking about is, you know, like helping insulin resistance by, you know, kind of slipping through those gates into the cell and where insulin goes, sugar is going to follow. So we see, you know, that can happen. Now, some people still need to add THC and Dr. Uma has explained that to me once about a couple of years ago, that some people will still need THC, especially, um, I think, to help produce their insulin. But with like insulin resistance, they talk about CBD. There's other things that CBD will do um, that they used to think only THC could do. And that's the things like um, apoptosis, that pre-prescribed uh, cell death, especially in like cancer cells, we want them to die. CBD can do that. CBD has also been reported to help uh, prevent angiogenesis, which is that food supply to um, those cancers. I'm sorry, my phone is kind of giving me feedback. Let me see if I can do this. If anyone has questions, I know we got a little scientific there about different terpenes or how uh, oh. cannabis works in the cells in our bodies. Please leave questions. We are here to help. Um, Aspen, I do not have it where I can see just because too much sensory is a little overwhelming for me. Although I'm doing pretty good with my CBG and my CBD gummies. Um, <laughs> you are doing great. I know. No, you're fine. I'm, I'm good. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, good. So if anybody asks a question, jump, jump I, me yes, and tackle will, me and tell me to stop talking and listen. So um, tell us a little bit about Alice CBD and how you help other patients do this every day. I, I'm pretty sure, right? Don't, is that what you do? Yeah, yeah. Um, clients, customers, and then we do help get patients certified. Uh, Dr. Boss comes down from Kansas City and we do this like every two weeks. to teach cultivation and whatever else they want to discuss, you know. Um, with cannabinoids, those are just the molecules that are in the cannabis plants. And that's why our receptors, when they were discovered, are called CB1 or CB2, cannabinoid 1, cannabinoid 2. Um, how I kind of really got into CBD and started focusing a lot on it, I focus on everything. The whole plant needs to be there. We need all of the plants. The reason why it became very, um, it became very necessary for, for, for me to find CBD legal products that you didn't need a card for was um, when I came back, I was ready to be illegally healed. And I was willing to just say, you know, I'll just do cannabis however I can. I need it. It worked for me when I was in Colorado for those four days. And again, thank you, Blake Bell, Thomas Mundell. Um, Mm -hmm. Chris, Wolf, Christina Dare, everybody that went out that first year. And then again, the second year, I got to meet even more great people with Project 22 that all came back and we helped get this legalized. We were a big push to get this legalized in Missouri. All of us veterans came and kicked butt. Um, with that, we I have a family member. <laughs> well, and everybody else that aren't veterans, but they was out there pounding the streets. Everybody's family members, you know, a lot of people gave a lot of things up during this time. But let me get over to the CBD side. I had a family member that um, that had rolled her car three times in a row um, during her like eighth accident in over two and a half years. She was on a lot of opioids and she was taking them as prescribed. But with a genetic defect of MTHFR, you don't metabolize medicines like everyone else does. So they just had to keep going up and up on her dosage. She had done back ablations uh, where they burn the nerves. She's, she's tried all kinds of things. The problem is, is the opiate still had to go up there for her to almost function, but she wasn't quite functioning perfectly. And, and I'm just going to tell you, Arkansas is crazy. I don't care if you're sober or not sober. Somebody's going to get in a wreck down there. <laughs> it's kind of like crazy. 
Oh man, I've mm -hmm. actually never been to Arkansas. <laughs> Thank goodness. I don't like crazy drivers. I've been to Florida. That that's for me. <laughs> yeah, you might need to take a lot of weed for that. Um, <laughs> or CBD because it's legal. You take it everywhere, and I'm telling yes. you, yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. So yes. I uh, tested it. I you can take it on a plane. It's it's all good. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. So um, with this family member, they were already scared. Their two kids came out of the car seats. You know, she wind up going to the hospital. And it was very apparent that I said, you're going to be Ill either illegally healed or illegally dead. And she said, you know, they'll take my kids. We started looking for CBD products so she would not have a hot test. So they would not take her kids. And so that she could hopefully dial back off of the opiates. I didn't think we'd really get her off. But um, within 45 days and after trying six different CBD oils, CBD pills, it was all kind of just junk. This ugly black paste came floating across. And it looks like RSO, but it's more like RSHO. It's hemp oil. So there's okay. almost no THC. Full of terpenes, full of cannabinoids, full of canaflavins or flavonoids, chlorophyll, all these things. They have such remarkable things in and each of themselves but as a whole product that tastes kind of like crap i mean it was kind of game set match we was able to get her off of all that stuff right in time um for her to uh get her medical marijuana card but the heavy lifting was really done with this stuff and i mean at first she's like you know all of these oils all of these pills none of it's working i can't you know the opiates are free i get them with the insurance but you know so it's a hard choice to kind of make that shift um, thank it goodness we got expensive to too. That's it's that's super a great expensive. topic. Um, where can the people buy that? Can anyone watching our live purchase that? Um, I mean, it doesn't have absolutely, to be absolutely. Yeah, so um, I ship it, you know, basically everywhere. Kansas isn't supposed to have it because it has 0.2 percent. You know, if it's over 0 0.09, they're not wanting it there, but I, we can basically ship it everywhere. Or you can come by our store down here in Webb City, Missouri, right by Joplin, and uh, pick it up in person. Or go to our website, www.alicecbd.com, and pick up either the Ugly Black Case, the CBG, or the Lion's Mane. After finding that Lion's Mane, I contacted a couple of different companies and got a five-mushroom complex. And I, I am still amazed that I just opened my, you know, text yesterday, and this lady from Getting It This Week is already starting to say they can tell, you know, with the lion's men. It's just that amazing. That is really, talk. really cool. That is awesome. So oh, and the best thing here. I've actually is, never heard of that. <laughs> the best thing is, um, you know, I have uh, a lot of autoimmune disorders, but the multiple sclerosis was diagnosed upon them doing an MRI and seeing the plaques on my brain and on my spine. For three years, the, the neurologist at the VA kept saying, well, almost three years. The first year, it was like, I can't agree with this, but I can't tell a grown woman what she can or can't put in her body. I knew they couldn't take my benefits unless I went to jail for using cannabis. I, you know, So I, I did my homework first, and um, I knew they couldn't take my disability or my medical benefits. They just wouldn't be able to prescribe opiates for me. Guess what? I didn't need them, and I couldn't really take them anyway. They had horrible side effects. Um, what I was able to do was convinced her by the end of three years that this was helping. And um, a year and a half ago when she reviewed my scan, she said, okay, I don't know what to say except for I think I'm a believer because my plaques were gone on my brain, all except for one that she said was probably from the opiate use. And then here it is a year and a half later and I got my scans in uh, March and this is after I had added lion's mane and kept doing the cannabinoids and added CBG and it was completely clear. And the doctor said, hey, you know, okay, it looks like you reversed your MS. And he said, wait, or no, he said, cured your MS. And he said, wait, I mean, reversed, which is fine. We're all going to, you know, have our own journeys, but hopefully, you know, this gives somebody hope to try something for themselves, whether it's my products or whatever you can find that's, you know, lab tested quality and, and has a lot of terps, which means it's going to taste a little crappy. <laughs> Do you think it would be okay for patients that are not necessarily having those symptoms to incorporate lion's mane in their holistic wellness plan? Um, Absolutely. You know, someone, Absolutely. you know, for example, just AD, not just, but, you know, ADHD or um, something like that. Absolutely. Um, and, and age is not really even a factor. And 
Species is not a factor. I have a lady that for neurological reasons has been using lion's mane that she breaks the capsules open for her dog and has already seen benefits of this dog walking again. Oh like my he, God. He, has some sort, he basically has a doggy form of MS and it was just kind of, you know, cool that we just kind of met. She started using it. She just came in. I don't think she's using it for herself, but you know, people take care of who they need to take care of. We, sh we do need to take care of ourselves. And I do think that, um, Joe Rogan has Paul statements on video and I can share that in my group and in your guys' group where he talks about using the lion's mane and the niacin and stuff. But he also talks about everybody is going to have some sort of cognitive um, repair that's going to need to be done. Think about our food. Think about our water. Think about our stress. And if you think that your thoughts do not have an impact on your health and wellness, just think about when the cop goes to pull you over and you hear these sirens. Woo! Wait, are they pulling me over? Someone else? I wasn't doing anything. Your heart still races. Your pupils dilate. You get a little panicky. And if they go on around you and it wasn't even about you, did you still not have a physical reaction because of what you thought? You absolutely did. So right. rethinking how we think about that. I was kind of talking about that at the beginning of the live, or I'm not sure if it was the last live, right? <laughs> figure out how to get you on but it is so true that your body hears what you say and reacts to that I mean even when something when someone says something funny even in your head you're like oh that was funny but you physically laugh and smile immediately you don't tell yourself to do that so what's happening on a cellular level I don't know but I mean something obviously there's no way that it's just that topical um, you know it's just not ever how it's worked <laughs> It's not separated. We're a whole being, you know, yes. soul, spirit, emotional, physical. And, you know, we do see um, epigenetics being able to be changed in people. I, I it's, mm -hmm. it sounds crazy, but I mean, I can start naming a lot of researchers and scientists that I'm following. And, you know, I don't know if it was the products or if they were the placebo, but either way, change your thinking, change your life, change your diet and get healthy foods in your diet, you know, healthy stuff in your diet, because we are what we eat. I actually saw the craziest study about how kids that grew up in the city were, you know, just more likely to be unhealthy. And it wasn't because of all the toxic things in the air, but not being close to nature and not being able to go to the ocean or go hang out in the mountains or just put your feet in the soil can really have an effect on you. Like with your get out of the tree. Yes, I know. I have all my plants here. We'll just have a little plant moment. <laughs> Yay. I know, I know. Next, we'll have to get some cannabis plants. Um, I don't have yes. my group yet, but just, just the patient one for now. Right, right. <laughs> well, let's it'll be nice when you can just be house plants. What? You know, it'll be nice when cannabis and hemp can just be house plants, you know. Where you don't have to Wouldn't keep them nice? locked up in a cage, you know. Yes, it'll happen. So I, uh, one of my friends had a seed, and I was like, "Isn't that crazy? I have all these other plants, but if I were to plant this next to it in my garden, like I could go to jail." So that is a little bit ridiculous, but we are working on changing that. Everyone is. We've made humongous strides, but you know, there are baby steps in reality to what we have to do. Um, the end goal is just for obviously federal legalization, but I think that is 10 ish years down the road. Some people say two. I think that's a long shot, but we'll see. We'll see. CBD is still illegal, so we do not know. <laughs> CBD is still illegal, is that what you said? Well, isn't it uh, federally illegal to, yeah, like have full spectrum CBD? Mm -mm. No, it just has to be under 0.3% THC in it to be considered um, hemp or CBD and legal. And that's from the, the hemp farm bill 2018. And the cool so thing is, they said Delta. It, it's like shot. Right, right. So if it has 0.5%, no, no. But now that is on the THC Delta 9. The plant also grows something called THC A. So, you know where I'm going with this? A was not outlawed. The Delta right. 9 was. A, when right. you apply heat, B, 
becomes delta nine. So there's a little bit of a loophole. But when we're dealing with like the concentrates and the finished products of, that are just truly CBD products, and we're not talking about getting your CBD flower, which you can kind of get some little wink, wink around, you know, right. um, we, we do still have to follow the federal guidelines. So it's, it's federally legal everywhere, or I wouldn't have a business where I have a bank account and stuff. That's a lot harder when it's federally illegal. So that hemp is, is completely yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of, and even, is it hard to keep, um, you know, a, a bank account open or people apprehensive about companies or would you say the so, stigma is kind of starting yeah. to break? I think it's starting to break. But a year ago when I opened up on 420, I'd started my business out of my house and on my couch um, in 2017, right after, well, basically the beginning of 2018, but right after I learned about cannabis as medicine and kind of just went on my journey by the end of the year, I knew I was going to be helping people with it. I just did it from my home on my couch. But a year ago when I went to open the actual brick and mortar and I was going to have real money coming through instead of like... I barely make any money because I'm scared that if I make any money, they're going to take it all from me anyway, because this could be illegal, blah, blah, blah. Once I knew that the hemp farm bill protected me, we opened a business. I had to go to a specific bank because everybody was turning me down for a CBD account because I literally put on my state paperwork, on my IRS paperwork, Alice CBD. You know, I just Our wanted name. to be totally transparent. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there we go. So with that, you know, I had to go through Arvest to get a CBD bank account okay. and they, they had to vet my products. They came and looked at my products. I had to send them all of my COAs to make sure I was not selling marijuana and that I was not dealing with a marijuana company or a company that deals with marijuana more than 50% of their total income, blah, blah, blah. I had to jump through a lot of stinking hopes to get a bank account. In the meantime, we're using PayPal to run credit cards. Oh, CBD, nope, we're taking that away. Square, oh no, you can't do that either. Take that away. Now I did get a Square beta account where they vetted me as just like the, the bank did. Um, so we're getting there. It's just still slow. And I think um, in a couple of years, hopefully that it's going to blow open to where the fully loaded cannabis businesses don't have to um, have such concerns about banking anymore. Hopefully that, that comes up soon. If it was, you know, people could use card and not have to get cash and pay those ATM fees that are pretty gouging that I've seen. Um, yeah. And so the businesses don't have to, cause you can buy cannabis with um, a credit card. I did it all day long in Denver. What, what it is, is they have kind of a back, back. Uh, I don't want to say back door. You basically run your card. It purchases an e-gift card, which in turns pay for your, your cannabis, but it's called jewelry card. So it's like an e -card, an e-gift card. The customer doesn't know they don't see it. But I mean, I'm talking like 8% in fees and stuff like that. It can get very disgusting very quick. But what do you do? Do you lose the sale? So I'm glad I don't have to deal with any of that right now anyway. I or, think they're going to see all the profits that they're missing out on and jump on it within the next year. Hopefully. And the Safe Banking yeah. Act. Um, I saw that was doing a lot toward, you know, to help cannabis companies. But I'm not sure, you know, how much and... Even if it's legal, our company is going to take you on, you know, not necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. Did we have any questions about CBD, CBG, I cannabinoids? I any questions. I, just, I see people hopping in. Um, do you have any closing statements? My, I feel bad my phone's about to die here. I would hate for it to die in the middle. Um, what would you like to leave everyone with? How can they get in touch with you? I would love if you posted that video and some links under it um after that would be great to check out too okay the the paul statements and the the nice and stacking one is yes. that what you mean on the video okay good yes or the joe rogan video i would be interested yeah in that. <laughs> yeah so joe rogan interviewing paul statements that's perfect and of course joe rogan has got a lot of funny stuff we might need to put some of those up to the live back. i grew up on fear factor so you know gotta watch those crazy podcasts every once in a while yeah i like the one where he talks about negative people are cancer get them the f away from me like there we go your energy is who you yes. let in your face and what you think so if you're on yeah. this vibe and someone's you know down here trying to bring you down you just you literally have to ignore lives so your you know personal growth isn't going to be stunted by their inability to grow yeah they may not even know that they're bringing people down 
You know, sometimes it is they're addicted to what they've always known. They're addicted to being themselves, which could be feels hopeless. And I, I was there too, too. That was my identity. I was just felt like I was going downhill. Um, and it's hard to see movement at that vibe. You know, you just want to die, you know, but there's, there's hope and it, it's a combination of things. It's not going to be one magic thing. So. Yes. And the cannabis community is an amazing place to start. Everyone is so supportive. And, you know, if you have kids and you're nervous that people are going to judge you for consuming cannabis or wanting to heal naturally, there are people here that are going to support you. They're going to let you know your rights. They're going to help you talk to your landlords. I've met some amazing people in this community and everyone is just so willing to put like their time and energy into just making sure everyone has the need to succeed. Right, right. And that's what I do. I help people get their patient ID cards. I talk to them about how to talk to their medical providers because we want them on the team. We want them to see what cannabinoids are doing. This is part of our anatomy. Why would a doctor not want to know what our anatomy is? We have to go out and educate them and empower the customers, clients, uh, patients to talk to their health team member. And even if they don't know what the ECS is, I give them a card to say, ask your doctor what this is or ask him to please learn about it. I've got doctors sending me customers all the time now, and they're using Honestly, it to It does, Bob. I love that they're sending them to you, but it is so unfortunate when I ask a doctor about the endocannabinoid system, and they're like, oh, I don't really know. And I'm like, but you've heard of it. Do you want to research it? Do you want to have, you know, that option for patients to, you know, where to go? Obviously, you know, that doctor has you, but a lot of doctors will just stop and um, I mean, the doctors we work with, Dr. Boss is awesome too. We definitely don't just have a patient. We don't just shrug our shoulders and, you know, turn the other way. We are always, if we don't have the answer, we're going to, we're going to turn and support it. And so I just want these surgical companies and these doctors and these medical programs. And all the things, I see them incorporate it, but I would just love to see them, you know, go full sports this semester's worth of information about it. Yeah, at the very least, least, look at it as part of anatomy, and you got to learn about anatomy, especially those doctors that are in neurology. It, it's really everyone. Every yes. body has an effect from the ECS, and they're prescribing something that works on the ECS, and they don't even know it. They may be giving you Tylenol. Guess what? Tylenol, acetaminophen, works in the endocannabinoid system. They used to not know why or how. When they tell you to exercise, they're telling you to get high. Our own brains, anandamide, is basically our body's THC molecule. Yes. Well, really and the word that. ananda, yeah, and the word ananda means bliss. Let's not give a, a medication, especially to our teenagers that are suicidal, when we can help their own body just upbeat, yeah. you know, yeah. with yeah. bliss. Even by just giving them CBD, it helps increase their own brains and anandamide. So it's biohacking, it's nutrients, it's, a, you know, there's, there's yeah. ways. And, and hopefully the, the doctors are listening more and more now because they're having yeah. patients go talk to them. I promise you, my customers are going to talk to their doctors when they get enough power and enough voice. And then they're not taking and going and refilling hydrocodone. They're like, hey, yeah, this is what I've been using. That well, I don't know if that's what's it. doing it. <laughs> yeah. That is an amazing moment. I hope everyone has the opportunity to experience um, one day. However, I feel like um, we've just made it seem like this cure-all. There are risks to cannabis. Everyone should do their own research. I firmly believe that even if something is amazing and there is research, do your own research. What are you, what are you going to find? Um, what works for you? Yeah. You're going to Google something different than we do just because we have different experiences. So I would... Um, look into everything and yeah we are always here for questions yeah. consult like a cannabis nurse yeah consult yes. a cannabis nurse love it. and have undo ready if you're going to use thc <laughs> i love that I've have you seen that, undo? I've, I've heard of it i've heard it's great i just use cbd personally <laughs> good I, deal uh, it's my favorite undo <laughs> perfect yes and well, probably too. 
we're, we're like redo it's like let me reset it and then i'll try again so <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> right right well thank you guys so much for hopping on i appreciate you and we will see you next thursday if you have any other questions for alice she is going to be making a post um right above this one so just check it out and i'll just really answer the comments thank you bye thank nice you to meet you ask bye and so i'll nice see you in person you. when i come to kansas city Yes, yes. <laughs> Bye.